what's just arrived. My rat drain guard. There it is. That's a handy uh, instruction there. That's what it looks like. Stops them coming in, but allows any water or debris to come through that way. It prevents them coming back up through the drain. And I think I made the right choice because it is possible to squeeze it ever so slightly, which gives me hope that I'll be able to fit it into the drain. The nuts and bolts for the top. It was at this point I realised I was actually screwing it on the wrong way. I looked on the box and the box uh, informed me that I was being silly. So I unscrewed it and I put it back on the correct way. I really ought to find a way to attach some sort of handle to this cast iron drain cover because it's always a little bit fiddly for me to take up. I always record myself taking this off because I don't know why but I'm just convinced that the rats are just going to be sat in there waiting for me and that I might be able to catch it on camera. The rats are not that stupid. If they were sat in there they've ran away but you never know just in case. I started by making sure that it was facing the right way with the flow of the water and it turns out that it's going to be a little bit trickier than I expected to get it in there but every time that I tried to put it in it felt like it could almost just fit if I had it at the right angles. Here I was just checking if the white plastic pipe was actually flush to the sides. It was and so I thought I really should be able to squeeze this in here. And in just a minute you'll find me getting the help of a handy hammer but before taking that sensible option i figured the strength of my palm would be sufficient to knock it into place and it was not i felt like this deserved a close-up you see my problem tapping it in sideways wasn't successful but i was convinced if i could just get the edges in i would be able to spin it round i can't even show you how i eventually got it in because i was in the way but after a fair bit longer fiddling around with it and pausing to consider my life choices, I managed to get it in and I just used the hammer to tap it into place. What I did notice is that because the pipe is angled downwards slightly, it was difficult for me to get it in flat. Every time that I tapped the top of it in further, the bottom would stand up, just like this which isn't a big deal, but it does mean that the angle of the flap inside was slightly different and I was worried that that might affect its performance, that they might be able to get past it somehow. So I would try to tap the bottom in a little bit more and the top would come out slightly, but in the end I decided as long as it was in there and it wasn't possible to push it out and it was mostly level, it was probably going to work. wedged in there pretty tight. What I'm going to do now is just go ahead and clear all of this rat's poo out from here so that I can tell whether or not they're able to come back. They shouldn't be able to get through there. <laughs> I figured you'd like a close-up of what it looks like inside. If you were a rat that would be a really unwelcome sight wouldn't it? Like a little let box. <laughs>
I thought I would give the upstream of the pipe a bit of a clean as well and it was so mucky which is very concerning because I only cleaned this out very recently. Watch your toes, mind. Toes, toes. This was probably the most satisfying job that I got to do today. I was filling in this planting tower with compost. I have about 10 of these. They cost me about a pound each. So this ended up being quite a cheap project. I don't have a whole host of space in this garden. So I try to make the best use of space where I can. I know what you're thinking. I really need to replace this sprayer. <laughs> it's just dripping out of every single corner. The soil was quite dry, so I gave it a good soaking before I consider planting anything in here. I actually don't think I have anything that's ready to plant in these pots, but I want to get it ready for when I am. The same goes for these hanging baskets. I have some small plants that are growing on top of my recycling bin in the front garden, and I might see if I can transplant some of them in here. Whilst I was planting, I ran out of my little plastic labels that I use to tell me what I've planted where, so I thought I'd make my own from whatever I could. I found this carton in the recycling bin and I made this short form video for my channels. It worked remarkably well and I saved myself some money. Don't forget to use permanent marker. That's very important. Otherwise it just rubs off. I grew these plants last year and as you can see they were all planted a little bit too close and they have reached the end of their growing ability in this pot. So I'm going to separate them out. I'm not entirely sure what these are. They're giving me weed vibes, but they have grown in quite a few of the pots, which make me feel like it might have been intentional. So I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and see what they grow into. As for these, these need to be planted about 30 centimeters apart. So I'm gonna give them their own pots, wait till they get a little bit bigger, and I'll plant them out around the pond. It's going to be a real challenge getting these apart because of how intertwined the roots are but usually you would just kind of squish it a little bit and then find somewhere to get your hand in and just very gently start to get some of the soil out and you can very gently pull some of the soil some of the roots apart. In that one little pot we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 plants plus these maybe weeds. Oh, 21. I've decided rather than putting them in two bigger pots, I'm just going to plant them straight out in the areas around the pond. I had some plants here last year, but they are seasonal, so they died off over the winter. I'm going to pull those out and I'm going to plant these in the place. I'm going to take this tool, it's called a dibber, and you insert it into the soil to make a little hole. And then I'm going to put the plants in the hole once it's made. I must admit this plant did give me a little bit of trouble. It just has such long roots that it was really difficult to get it in there. I'll water these straight away so that the roots don't get too dry. I had them out in the sun for a fair bit of time actually. I decided to hollow out each of the middles of these and put in a little pot which allows me to save a little bit of the compost. After I finished in the garden for the day I decided to look at what projects need to be done in the house next. I have to do something about this random cable. It's a power supply for my blinds, which are voice activated. It travels down to this extension lead as I have no plug socket on that side of the room. So I'm just going to get some cable ties and I'm going to tie it in to the skirting board 
it's going to look a bit out of place because the colour will be different. So I might even paint over it. I'm not too precious about this particular extension lead. As always, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time.